Hello and welcome to the twelfth video in this series, Programming Simple Floppy Robin for Android using Cocos 2DX. So this video then we're going to look at adding some scoring onto our, um, into our game so we can keep score. And to do that we're going to need a couple of items, a couple of labels, one for the high score and one for the current score. And a label that's provided by the Cocos 2D framework is called CC Label TTF. And we'll make one called a score label. And we'll make one called a high score label as well. So I'll just put high in there and a capital S and leave a gap. So what we'll do first is we'll just position these on the screen so they look OK and then look at the values. Going to hello world scene.cpp then. To create our label, we need a couple of things: a font size, a font name. Um, and that's it, that's the couple of things. Uh, if we're going to constants.h, I'm going to add in our font name here. So I'll call it k font name. And I'm going to call it marker felt. Simply like that. One thing I've done in preparation for this video actually is I've already right clicked on resources, gone add files, selected fonts, and then clicked add without doing any copying. And that's added in the fonts folder and inside there is the marker felt.ttf. Now for the Mac we just need to put the name in like this. For Android we need to put the fonts forward slash marker felt.ttf but we'll do that when we go move into Eclipse to do the Android specific um, stuff for the application. At the moment we'll stay like this. This is all we need to do for our font definition. Just below the SRAN time null here then we'll enter some things for our labels. I want the labels to be one above the other on the top left hand side of the screen. So I'm going to make a float and I'm going to call this score font size and the reason they're being named here is when we start dealing with the multiple aspect ratios and resolutions we'll need these to be predefined so we can multiply these values and it's easier to predefine them here rather than hard coding into the functions. So we'll put the score font size of 24 to start with and we'll float and say score um, score label uh, score position x so this is the x position of the score It'd be 24 pixels and the constant float and score position y and this will be 12 and what the x is is a distance from the left hand side of the screen to the label 24 pixels which means we'll be setting our anchor point for the x is zero. The y is the gap to the next thing above. So the first label will be the top of the screen and for the second label will be to the first label. So there's always a gap of 12 pixels and again that means we'll be setting then the anchor point for the y as a 1 to use these. So down here we'll set up the score label to start with and the way you do this is simply to say cc, lib, cc is simply to say sorry cc label ttf and then there's a create provided. We need to just supply our string which will just say score zero and then we want k font name which was our um, de definition we've just made and then we've got the score font size and that's all we need to do. The next thing is to set the anchor point which is done exactly the same as for sprites and things so set and anchor point ccp and for the label as we said we want a zero by one and last but not least is just to set the position and we set the position CCP and here we want the score position X and with the Y remember that Y increases as we go upwards so we want the visible size the height minus the score position Y and last but not least if I add in this bracket correctly we need to just add it to the layer using the add child and we'll keep the same z index as the robin to make sure they're on the front. I'm just going to brutally take this and copy it and paste it below here just so that we can make things a little bit quicker. So high score label I'll change the text in a minute just make sure I change all these and then we want here we'll say best instead of score and the only slightly tricky thing here obviously is we want to take the origin of the label above so we'll take the score label and its bounding box and the origin dot the y and subtract from that the score position y and then add it 
to our layer. So if I just run the application now, we should have on the top left a couple of labels, except, oops, I need to take that out of there. That was still in from preparation earlier. Sorry, build and run the application again. And we should now have, yes, on the left-hand side now, you can see we've got score and best in the Markerfeld font as well. Okay, so I'll press stop there then. And now we can move on to the next phase, which is actually updating the score, which you saw a tiny preview of because I forgot to remove some code out when I was just checking how things worked earlier. When we actually score, where we want to score is give a point for every time the Robin passes a tube. So inside constants, I just want to say define, if it lets me, please define and k tube score. And we'll just give it one point for each tube that it passes. If you think about this, we'll be, uh, let me just run the application so I can crash into a tube and quickly talk through how I want to do this. There are many ways of doing this. And so we're coming along to the tubes here and let's just crash into a tube. Okay, good. So what we want to say is when we're past the tube, we want to score points for that tube. So it's simple to say, if our x is bigger than this tube's x, then score a point. The problem is we're constantly calling game update. So if we ask inside there, if our x is greater than a certain tube's x, then score a point, then we'll get 60 times a second points added for the tubes that are behind us. And also for the tubes, remember, that are off screen at the inactive x point, which we don't want. So what we want is we want a way of identifying whether a tube has already been counted in the score or not. So to do that we'll go inside the tube class and we'll add in a boolean variable called scored and we'll set this scored value which is what you just saw deleted inside the stop here for when it's ready to be used to false. Then what we'll do inside tube is write a couple of public functions. One of them is to say set is scored so this will be set from the main layer to say okay this one has been scored and then the other one is to return a ball and just say get is scored as well. So I'll just take both of these then and drop these down the bottom of the code file tube here and just drop that in. Add some brackets. Okay, so set is scored, then we will make scored equal to true and get is scored will just return scored. So this way when we've included a tube in our score we can set it scored then to true and we can check whether it's been included when we're scoring it for our robin. Okay so that's all done then with the tube scoring so we can go back into hello world scene now and what of course we need is a variable to actually keep track of the score. So underneath the floor y, I'm going to make a bit of space it's not very neat, so let's make an int and game score and we'll set this game score each time we start a game. So down into Hello World Scene and find Start Game and we'll set this equal to zero. And now what we need to do is increment this score by an amount of our K tube score every time the Robin passes a tube. And we'll do this obviously inside our update function. So here we're asking the question, have we collided with a tube, yes or no? Otherwise, what we'll say is, if the tube is active, we can say else if, and we can say tube and get get is get is scored. If that equals false, just finding my reference text here to make sure this goes correctly. Okay, so if this tube hasn't been included in the score, we then need to check whether we are far enough along to include this uh, tube in our score. So what we can say is that if the tube bounding box dot origin dot x, so the left hand point of the tube, right, well it's rectangle, plus the tube bounding box dot size dot width. So this is basically the right hand most point of the tube's bounding box. If this is less than, I'll just close that bracket there, our robins 
bounding box dot origin dot x we can 100% be sure that we have cleared this tube and we're not going to crash into it and therefore we can say the tube and we can say set is scored so we can say that the tube then okay has been counted in the score and now we want to increment our game score by k tube score like so and that then keeps track of our game score the only thing is we're not doing anything inside here actually to update our label at all with the current score so let's go back into hello world scene dot h and let's just write a new function private one down the bottom here and say void and update score label and the reason I'm putting this there's some other reasons later on in the Android why I'm putting this in a separate function so we've got here the update score label let's just copy the definition go into here and below the update itself then let's drop this in here like so take the hello world definition now the you have to supply to update a CC label TTF you have to supply a pointer to um, a character or an, a, a set of characters so like a character array to the score label set string method so we're going to create a character array and I'll just call this score string and let's make it as space doesn't really matter that much in this case make it 64 characters why not it's definitely big enough so we'll say we'll use good old s print f for this and so we have our score string and then we want score and percentage D and then obviously the game score is what we're going to be using to update the score and the last thing we need to do is take our score label and we can call set string on this with our score string like so and the last thing we need to do then is update this score label each time we come before game over like so and that should be all we need to do. If I run the application now to play the game, then hopefully, as we go past the tubes, if I get past any tubes indeed, we should score a point for each tube we've gone past, including the pairs. So you can see there we've got two points for going past that one. Now I've got three points, four, five points, six points, and so on. I crash into this one. And the score says as it is it's probably best to have the score text maybe in red because you can't really see that very well behind uh, behind the clouds there um, but you get the idea anyway we'll start the game again and carry on the one thing it's not doing of course is saving the best score but that's something we're going to deal with when we actually come to the android part because we're going to do all settings saving and uh, score saving and things like that we're going to do inside the java part of the android rather than the C++ because we're also wanting to be submitting scores to the games, uh, Google Play Center and things like that. Okay then, so that's it for this video. The game is more or less in a fully playable state. The only thing that's remaining to do now is when we crash, the user could, as the crash happened, very quickly tap the robin to try and get him to jump. And the effect there would have been like so. I'll just make another crash. So we're going along and I want to crash into the tube and now I click straight away and the game starts again. There's no pause. So what we need to be able to do to make things look a bit better is actually force a pause in here and maybe flash up some text saying game over or something like that. And the user can't do anything at least for a couple of seconds and then they press to start the game again. And the other thing that's not so good is that we have to tap the robin to start the game again when the robin's right down here on the bottom of the screen. So we'll fix those things in the next video and then we'll be able to think about the multi-resolution problem before moving on to Android. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.